When you think scary, when scary enters your mind as a thought, and I know that the word scary is not always sufficient, but I think you know what I'm going for. Horror. What is it that enters your mind when you think of it in the context of a movie? What does that mean to you? What is it that makes you... What makes your skin crawl, Scott, more than anything when you're watching a movie? Can you put words to it? I would have to say atmosphere because I'm not a fan of jump scares. They don't build anything. They're just a cheap payoff. But if you can make me uncomfortable through an atmosphere as a, as a vibe, as the young kids would say, uh, that's the most terrifying thing. Like, uh, we'll get into a bunch of movies, but that's what really pushes me, my boundaries as far as to make me uncomfortable. That pushes me into like a, a, a place where I can sit there and put myself in that situation and be terrified. Gotcha. Atmosphere meaning setting Set. Uh, I mean the whole collective part of it. Okay. I mean, setting uh you know if you you can make a broody type movie that is kind of dreary dreary and and scary and dark and and keep that the entire time while keeping you know all the action moving along but keeping the atmosphere a major part of it it really stands out for me movies that do that gotcha would you say that's as we get into probably what would be some of your scariest movies is that the recurring theme in good horror to you? Is that something like consistent, good, frightening atmosphere to you? Yeah. Like anything that can, I can put myself in and right. feel uncomfortable is good to me. Um, I, like I always tell everyone that, you know, I've grown up watching horror movies my entire life. It takes a lot to get me on ease right. from a movie itself. So right. when you do kudos to you, and it's usually movies that have spent the time to, to build a slow burn, story that has a lot of atmosphere to it. Gotcha. Yeah, atmosphere is an interesting one because it, I know it, it's a very strange thing to describe because even even in many different types of genres, I think of atmosphere as something that can really make or break something. I think uh, it has a lot to do, your atmosphere has a lot to do with the tone of your movie. And sometimes if you say horror as a genre, especially in film, atmosphere might not necessarily be created equal across many different types of films within the horror genre or even horror subgenres of which there are so many right Absolutely. atmosphere could be anything from for me when you say atmosphere i think of things like the setting a spooky place a place that's just unnerving and uh, it makes you feel tension just from being there but when you're describing it, it almost sounds like you're talking about the entire package as filmmaking as a process Everything from movie, music to costume to setting to uh, just a certain, again, atmosphere maybe is the best way to say it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What about you? I think for me, it has to do with an old definition I've thrown around a lot of times. It's when your senses reject that, what, that which is happening because that which is happening does not compute logically and it makes your brain go haywire. Now, okay. <clears throat> to... to, to to discuss something that I've talked about before a long time ago in the science fiction film podcast. What I mean by that is this. I think if you have a situation where a monster is in the woods and it comes out of the woods, some kind of bear or a maniac or whatever it happens to be, that increases, that causes a certain sense of fear. And I think there's an important distinction to be made between fear and horror. And I think fear is an immediate threat to your person. Uh, are you fighting? Are you fleeing? Are you freezing? What are you mm -hmm. going to do when presented with this situation? And then there's the horror of a situation, which is you come home and uh, the lights are dim and your partner's standing in the kitchen with their back to you. And when they turn around, they don't have a mouth, right? Yeah. That's yeah. horror to me. That's the scariest shit to me because it doesn't make sense. Your brain is like, why does my wife not have a mouth? Where did it go? Why is it sewn shut? Why is, why, you know, anything, especially when it wears the distorted face of what you think is supposed to be the thing you know. To me, that's the scariest type of horror. 
And without bearing the lead, it's one of the reasons Hereditary comes up so many times in people's lists is because Toni Collette, as she starts to lose her grip, we start to not trust her. She starts as the protagonist. And the brilliance of that film is that she then moves almost into an antagonistic role. <clears throat> the same could be said about Reagan. Re Reagan? I, I always say it wrong. And The Exorcist. Reagan. Yeah. Reagan. Yeah, like President Reagan. And The Exorcist. And a victim that then becomes, I'm not sure if I can trust her. I'm scared around her for this very reason. Um, it's one of the reasons in science fiction, I love changelings. I love infiltration terminators. I love Cylons. I love replicants because I love the hidden, I love the hidden horror among us. I think that's fantastic. It's one of the reasons all of those white wolf uh, RPGs are so fascinating to me. Things like Vampire the Masquerade. It, it wears the face of your friend. And I think that's probably the scariest shit for me because yeah. it, it causes you to freeze utterly. Unlike a man with a chainsaw, although horrifying, although very scary and I would probably be, probably best to be described as far as I can see as scary, causing fear. But but horror and fear I think are very different. And I know I'm I'm mincing words here, and people probably roll their eyes at that distinction. <laughs> but I think fear is an immediate water hits you in the face, and you have to decide what to do. A wolf, you turn and there's a big hunting cat in your kitchen. Holy fuck! You shit and piss your pants, and then. You either have a weapon, you run and hide, you try to get away from it. That's an immediate problem to your very mortal <laughs> condition, <laughs> to, to your life. <laughs> and <laughs> then there's the, um, you, when you're, when you're, when you knock on your mom's door and it just swings open and you're not sure what's going on and it's thunder and lightning and outside and you walk into her house and the floorboards creak and you go, mom, what's going on? And she says, in here, honey, and you walk into the kitchen and when she turns around, her face is on upside down. That's horrifying yeah. to me. That's the thing that makes your senses reject the reality. That's what causes you to fall to your knees in that empty feeling just from your stomach consumes your whole body and you can't even do anything. But that doesn't make any sense. So that's, I think, the distinction I like to make between the two. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. So on this, I'm going to share it so strange that we're co covering this today on Saturday, recording this on a Saturday. Because, dude, I had a fucking dream last night that I w wrote down when I woke up. All right. And here it goes. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you where it comes from. So I wrote, my friend Tom and I, shout out to Tom, my boy in Florida. My friend Tom and I were in a yard at night. We were talking to mutual friend to a mutual friend, as I just knew because dreams are weird that it was my friend, and I also just knew because dreams are weird that he was lying in a hammock. It was difficult to see him, and it was at night. I'm not sure what we talked about, but there was a moment where we heard rustling from nearby woods. Then our friend in the hammock started to scream, and we heard animal noises. We both stood up and quickly whipped out guns. <laughs> Apparently, we're holding guns. Oh, yeah? Except our guns were both locked, and we ran inside to grab the keys. Then the dream sort of fast-forwards, and we learned that it was some kind of organized crime people that were after him, mimicking animal noises of a sort. We then saw headlights in the driveway leaving with our friend and we concealed ourselves in the house behind the windows and drew the curtains, although the curtains were sheets, not real curtains. We then kneeled down and peeked out the window and contemplated opening fire. My friend Tom held up his hand and said, wait, wait, we can track him with this. And he held up a device and I said, and then I agreed and then I woke up. Now, I was scared in that dream, but it wasn't horrifying. Do you understand? Yeah. Because when I heard that noise, it freaked me the fuck out. So there's a couple things here. Um, <laughs> a couple of them may be a little too personal for me to get into regarding uh, the condition of my home because I don't want to uh, invite uh, uh, outside uh, agents to be in my house. So I'll simply just say this. I've been reading a lot of the Werewolf the Apocalypse book, 5th edition, and mm -hmm. I thought about werewolf people or people that are wolves and how they have these family members that know they're werewolves and try to help them. And I just thought maybe that maybe that's where that came from. This idea of these people making animal noises taking my friend away, but them also kind of being organized and intelligent, which mm -hmm. is what makes me think of werewolf people. <laughs> so that's a perfect example. I Jesus. woke up in a sweat and I went and took a piss and I was like, fuck. 
That scared me. I texted my friend Tom. He just goes, ha, ah, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that's all he had to contribute. It's but that's a that good works. example of fear and how our brain just works and extrapolates different things. But uh, it's it's crazy. Um, of course, I sent that to to my wife saying, here's, here's my scary dream. And she says, here's the dream I had about giving into death and being consumed by a demon. And that woman remembers her dreams damn near every night in crazy detail. I keep telling her to write them all down because she could make a yeah. book. You should, because that's a rare talent. It's crazy. Yeah, she 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 should do that. I mean, they're, they're, if I could, if we could make graphic novels of her nightmares, they'd be the scariest dreams you've ever heard of. Well, you just have just, her do it because she has that artistic edge. Like, have her yeah, fucking exactly. paint it and, like, yeah. put it together. I could do the fucking words, you know? I could pretend to know how to write dialogue, and then we're good. We got Hell a million-dollar yeah. idea. But uh, this gets back to uh, just scary movies in general as we're sort of introducing all this topic. But what what is a movie? I know you made a list of movies. Pick one of those movies. Tell me why it makes you scared. Because this isn't really a list of top five or anything. No. We're just going to bullshit here. No. Give me a movie from your list that you've put together and talk to me about why it's scary. Have you ever seen the movie The Strangers? Is that the one with Liv Tyler? Yes. Dude, okay, here's the deal. I haven't seen that movie, but I've seen that scene because it was on HBO when I had TV like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I remember it really disturbing me. I want you yes. to tell me why it disturbs you first, and then I will remember that I'm thinking of this movie correctly or incorrectly based on what you tell me. Okay. Okay. Um, it's just basically people are at an isolated childhood summer home and these group of people that wear these really fucking creepy masks basically assault the home and fuck with these people. Right. And they're on the phone with them and they're like, why are you doing this? And this is the best answer. And this is why I find this scary. The person on the other end goes, you were home. Damn. No fucking other motivation except for they drove by and saw that the lights were on in your home and they decided to come in and fuck with you. That's fucked up. Um, as someone who lives alone, who hears a lot of, uh, you know, I live right near woods, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm in the corner, you know, with the handgun waiting, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's terrifying. Um, You're legally can, purchased, owned and licensed. Fire legally on. licensed, licensed to carry, licensed to carry. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, those those types of movies that put me right in their place like i was in that movie with them i wasn't yeah. watching it i was in that room being terrified by these three or four people that are basically hunting these people down i won't get into the spoiler alert because you guys are you know someone had seen it but it's been six years uh i won't know you can for you either it's they just they just murk these spoil. people for no reason except for yeah. the fact that they are there they drove by and saw the lights on and that's that randomness and mm plotless or, or you know motiveless is so unsettling to me because it could happen to any of us at any time yeah you know you can have that, a madman driving down your street and go oh that light's on he's podcasting he fucking waits till i walk away from the the window and crawls in and then he kills me that's right. terrifying to me for sure man and that shit's happened that shit's happened to people mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times it is targeted but that randomness you do hear about that shit sometimes it could be some kind of initiation could be anything. Just, hey, whoever flashes their... I've, I've heard this tale before. Whoever flashes their lights at you on the highway, turn around and follow them home and kill them. Yeah. What the fuck? That's crazy. Crazy. Trying to help someone out. You got your fire lights and it's going to end your life. Or you're saying, hey, cop up ahead. How ironic yeah. is that? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to be no, a nice man. guy. Save them a ticket and they're going to cut you into pieces. Oh, shit. That idea, that, that mindless killing randomly just because they were home is super scary. And if I'm not, re and, and I think one of the scariest disturbing parts of that movie is there's a couple of people tied to chairs, if I remember. Yeah. And at they the end of it. stab one of the people and while the other one just watches. Can you imagine just for a minute, if you're tied to a chair with your significant other tied in the other chair, watching people stab that person to death? That is oh. Oh, fucking vile. First of all, execution is a, thing that really bothers me in movies. I hate watching movies about people on death row. I hate watching movies about people like in prison. Like that yeah. shit just drives me crazy. Even, even if they're pieces of shit, you know, I have my own feelings about capital punishment and all that shit because, you know, if you've 
if you've put too many people to death who shouldn't have been put to death, then the system has failed as far as I can yeah. tell. Because if, if one if, innocent man if, dies, one, then you fucked just up. Just one. You fucked then up. Fuck, yeah, exactly. You fucked up. Which you already know there's more than one. There's Right, thousands. because guess what it doesn't do as I get as I get into this? As I say, I'm not going to get into this and then get into it. That's it fine. doesn't de- It doesn't deter crime. Nope. doesn't deter crime. The places not where people all. get murdered the most, they have death penalties there. <laughs> so it yep. doesn't, doesn't... Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what the solution... I'm not saying I have a solution, but I'm just saying if the state has the power to kill innocent people, even after appeals, and yes, it's super rare, but what if you're the guy? Yeah, what if that's your family member? That sucks, man. Anyway, all that shit aside, yeah, that that's the idea that they're tied to the chair and there's no fighting it, and and that's one of the scariest things to me. That's why I freak out about you know your body turning against you, or cancer, like you. There's no, it just happens, right? Yeah. Yes, you can no do control. things in your life to minimize it, but that is it. And I think that's my problem. Obviously, I do probably have some control anxieties and shit, and I think. The idea of not being able to, I, I've said this all the time, I would rather have to fight a dude with a box cutter on a plane than watch an engine be on fire while I'm fucking flying in the plane. Yep, because you have because some I, sort I, of I, choice. It, exactly. It's like, worst case that you get killed. <laughs> you get my <laughs> neck, but I might get you. Maybe. I might get you. Right? And I might freeze in that situation. I'm not saying I'm, I'm a fucking action star. No. I might freeze. But that idea just terrifies me. The idea of just being tied up and unable yep. to do anything Nothing about it. That's why, do. you know, the end of Braveheart, when they catch him, you're just like, man. Ugh. Yeah. He's just at their mercy. And then the best thing ever happens in that movie, which is him yelling freedom, which is essentially him saying, give me the wrench because fuck you. Yep. Right? Yep. So that's awesome. But um, but yeah, that helped. I remember the people being tied to a chair in that movie and them just stabbing. Just, re- man, stabbing like that is just so intense. Yeah. That scene it's, at the ba- in the back, and not a horror movie, but in the back of the car in Goodfellas, he's just stabbing oh, yeah, the dude. Yeah. He's, thump, thump, thump. he's just hitting it's, him with a, it's, yeah. it's like he's it's like he's poking holes in a watermelon. He just, or he's just, like just, hanging out in London, you know. <laughs> 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 nice one. <laughs> Throughout the ages, but yeah. Huh? Take, they, so oh, man, have, it is you know, guns, that so. helplessness. That's a helplessness is really scary to me. Did you lose me it's here? It's really scary to me. And there are times Did when I lose you just. You? Hey, no, what's I'm, going on? I'm still here. Just, just, right. just, just roll it through. Um, yeah, that just... helplessness is one of those things where it's just like, man, that fucking blows. And yeah, yeah. that's scary. Give, me. give me the shot at least. Give me a chance. Like you know, yeah. it's like you're on the beach there. Give, give, you're kicking our ass, and it ain't fair. Yeah, it's you just very want that true. chance. You just want For that sh- chance. Right. Um, I'll talk about something that scared me. There's a few things that scared me, but. Um, so I know it's probably retrospectively not super scary anymore, but Blair Witch Project fucking scared me. On my list, buddy. And I'll tell you why. Because of when it was released. I can't believe we've never covered this movie. We should. I know. Because of when it was released and because of this idea that, oh, maybe this is real is just, you know, in the nineties, you're dumb. You don't have, you're not dumb, but you don't have access to information like we do today. Yeah. You don't have the may, smarts, which may be better actually in retrospect, but, um, but you, you are like thinking this could be based on a true story and all this other shit and what did happen. But obviously in that movie, when you hear them talking the tales about the Blair witch and, and the people standing in the corner, and then the person sees them standing in the corner at the end, it's immediate goosebumps all over your body. And that's one of those movies that's that horror. is atmospheric. The entire ah, talk to me movie, about that. the entire movie is them in the woods alone, isolated. And they've already had this precursor of this, this lore in the back of their head. So they're starting to think, you know, t- you wouldn't think it would be supernatural just because you're getting lost and things are, people are dropping stuff around you. You would be like, oh, someone's messing with us. But because sure. they had the seed planted of the Blair Witch in their head, that's what they're thinking. And they're so isolated. They're so lost. They, they're, they're babes in the wild. And mm. that builds this kind of atmosphere of complete panic, like shitting your pants panic because they don't know how to navigate the forest. They don't know how to, without maps, they don't know how to do any of that stuff. They have no survival skills and they're at the whim of whoever's messing with them in the night. And you don't know who it is. Is it the Blair Witch? We don't know. It's so ambiguous and it leaves you there. When you go downstairs, you're seeing that camera, you hear, you know, you, they hear their friend 
He's screaming, help me, help yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, And they go, they find this house with all these fucking handprints all over the walls. And, <sighs> and for some reason they go in it because, uh, my, all my like fight or flight is like, nope, not going See in it. there, not going in there because I'm going to get fucking beat or I'm going to hit over, hit over the head and it's over. Uh, right. but then they go downstairs and they see the other, the other character, I think his name is Josh. He's leaning against the, the, the wall because yeah. that calls back to the lore of that. The Blair, Witch didn't want anyone watching. So you had to face away. And before <laughs> you even get to think about it, thump, you hear a loud noise, camera goes on its side and that's where the movie ends. And now because of the atmosphere, it allows you to your mind to fill in all the blanks, which is to me a hundred times shit. more terrifying than showing me. I just sat there. I was in my friend's basement and I was like, wait, that's it. What happened? Who, who hit him? What, what did they trip? Did they fall? Camera runs out of film and, and a movie. And I was like, fuck, I'm like a goosebumps just thinking about it right now. <laughs> that's Ugh. a great point. I like how you said it lets your mind fill in the blanks because of the lore. And that's what the atmosphere was able to produce. And now I'm starting to wrap my head around some specifics of what you meant by atmosphere. That's a great point, which brings us to our, our, our recording that we did on the LDI, um, ahead of this one, which was It Follows, which we have described as having a difficult third act because it sort of starts to show us a little bit too much. We start to be able to define and put rules on this thing that this this implacable foe that would just walk at you endlessly. Yeah. And in the third act, almost undermines some of that setup. Whereas in The Blair Witch, that seems to be the the ultimate moment of that picture. Yes, yeah, the crescendo is the end of the act seeing all of the clues that you've built up along the way come to fruition. What's funny about that is that you could have a script or a screenplay that says, here's how we're going to, we're going to talk about all the things and then you're going to see all the things at the end and it's going to scare you. That's not easy to do. That's where the atmosphere comes into it. Like you're describing with Blair, which if I say, okay, here's the three pieces of foreshadowing. They're going to see the rocks. You're going to know about the kids. So when they see the handprints and the people standing in the corner, cause they don't want the Blair Witch to watch and then we're going to show the people standing in the corner and the handprints at the end. Isn't that scary? Well, on paper, maybe not. So how do you make it go from being scary on paper, not scary on paper, to scary on the film? And that's where your aforementioned atmosphere comes in. Yeah. The comes decision, in. How, atmosphere is built so many ways. It's built with music. It's built with performance. It's built with cinematography. Where do you put the camera? It's built with how do you edit these shots? How much are you showing us? It's a lot of work to build atmosphere. The master yes. of atmosphere is probably one of is Stanley Kubrick, yep. and yep. Uh, and I think that, and I think that almost uh, is a good segue for us to talk a little bit about The Shining, as as a as a movie that I have always thought was scary, but it doesn't. It's not quite scary to me. It's just it, that The Shining is a good example of a movie that I love. I watch it every year and sometimes i put it on the background which is so fucking weird to say but i think it's just because of what kubrick does with the camera he mesmerizes me and i think when i put on the shining and i have it on the atmosphere all of that shit now obviously it's a very quick descent from the jack character jack torrance yeah yeah but, of course but that is the that is the enemy with the face of the person that's supposed to love you. That's that horror idea. He starts yes. to lose his shit, and when you're a little kid and you're not and you're and you're helpless against it, that's scary. That's difficult. And then on top of we're not sure what's going on with the boy and the music and the use of camera, it's it's a dreadful atmosphere. It doesn't scare you as much. Maybe the tub lady, maybe the, that sort of crescendo at the end where people are in pig masks and weird things are happening, but. Um, it, it is not super horrifying, but there is a movie that is drenched in what you call atmosphere. Did mm -hmm. that make any of the lists in your mind? That was an honorable mention on one of my... On awesome. This, um, because of the, the isolation of being so far away from everyone, the phone lines don't work, the, the power... Yeah, you're on your own power grid, everything. You're there out in the middle of nowhere. And if you can't... You know, it's very hard for us to put ourselves there because we live in such a you know, overwhelming society, especially on the East Coast with so many people everywhere. Mm. But if you go out West and you've driven anywhere and you've gone an hour before you've seen a car, <laughs> that can, it can make you unsettled alone because we're so used to it here. But out there, it's just another, just another day, a couple people here and there. That going to the, you know, that hotel and, and being out there alone and then seeing them 
really have no way out. His, his, the, the son and the, the wife have nowhere to go. Nowhere they have to no go. one to call for help. There's no one coming. And he and the man, the most physical one of the group, is losing his mind. Yep. And eventually turns into a villain towards them. And that's terrifying because, again, it goes back to the whole archetype of like, you know, your man is your protector, but now he's gone. Now you just have the, the young boy and the wife and they're literally running for their lives and have no one to help them. Yeah. That's scary. That's terrifying for anyone who's ever been young and seen your father get in an altercation with somebody else and you don't quite understand <laughs> it, which I have. You know, I'm sure you have because we I think we had pretty similar fathers, oh. you know, um, but you don't quite understand it. But you see the the animal come out in your father to protect you because you're in this situation like and that's something that a lot of movies don't get or they try to touch into. But it's not as effective as The Shining is. Yeah. When I saw the diamond glint in my father's eye, I started to understand my temper problems when I was younger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, that's a great fucking way to say it. And you said it, and, and I think it's going to spin us into a new direction. You talked about isolation, Scott. Oh yeah. boy, my favorite movies are about isolation. My favorite fucking movies. And another thing you said before I go forward, and I want to make sure that we stick on this point because you made a very good one. You've driven across the country many times. Yes. You've been to those states that are five times the size of Massachusetts. You've driven through the middle of the country where there is nothing, yep. nothing, right? Oh, the yep. population centers are on the coasts, the middle of the country, not so much, barring places like Chicago and other major metropolitan yeah. areas. But all around the Great Lakes, anywhere else, it's a dead zone. Like, uh, like Fargo, North Dakota. Ha I have more people in my little town than that giant city, the biggest city in in North Dakota does. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Sh shout out to Dan, uh, Audrey's partner, Dan. Yep. He's from Fargo. Hell yeah, <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, yeah. So. We'll get we'll get to his uh, one of the one of his write-ins. His only write-in for what's the scariest thing he ever saw. He wrote his parents' sex tape. <laughs> so that's what they do in Fargo for the record. Damn, tying it all back. But to talk about isolation, unless you've been in true isolation, I'm not sure you can truly understand it. To it's, there's a lot of people okay. who live introverted, quiet lives, but there's people within a couple miles. One yeah. A mile away. There could be a person up the street, down the street, around. Yes. Real isolation. I, I can't even speak to it, to be honest with you. My Here's my biggest remembrance of true isolation. And I wasn't alone. I was on a boat doing, and I was fishing. And I don't mean fishing on a pond. I mean out there. And I'm seen, not right? talking about, I'm not talking about the Bering Strait, deadliest catch, fucking <laughs> waves destroying the boat. Get your but crabs. I was way the fuck out there and the waves are going up and down and we were fishing for, I don't know what it was, not crazy far, but there was no coast. Yep. There's no coast. When you don't see the coast, you start to go, holy shit, right? Now yeah. the Portuguese that's in me was, was, you know, trying to say, don't be a pussy. This is what we did. Fucking, <laughs> fucking sail the oceans. We discovered Japan and shit. Don't nah, be a pussy. Dude. But every part of my being was like, I'm going to be a pussy. But I wasn't a pussy, but I was a pussy on the inside because I was thinking to myself, this is it. Nobody's here. Like We're if done. this guy dies, he just dies. What do we do? We're in the middle of the fucking ocean. Not in the middle. Again, not in the middle. No. That's why people are like going on cruises and shit. I'm like, man, you, you think about the Titanic. Think about pilgrims. What? You're in a wooden boat going across the Atlantic. Are you fucking crazy? Big stones, man. Big stones. That's the all. No. My only take on isolation is that right there. Yes, you can isolate yourself from your fellow humans, but the reality is, is that they're still nearby unless you know these big open places. Unless you really understand that, it's hard to imagine. Because I was like on this little boat. What if? What? What if I just took this fucking you had like a quahog rake or something? What if I just yeah. cracked them in the head with it and threw them overboard? Then what? you're done. <laughs> this is Because you don't know how to it's operate just, the boat. Yeah, it's those know. intrusive feelings. Like, what of if course. I just took that hand axe and that? Well, what would happen? We'd be out here. How do we get back? How do you even nope. find your way back? 
Nope. Crazy. You, I mean, you, you kind of go, okay, the sun, it's after midday. It's okay. The sun's on the left. So yeah. let's go, you know, you start trying to, but yeah, it's, it's something we can't tap into all the time. Um, but I'll tell not you. Not from where, not where I live. And not I'm, where we are. I live in a rural fucking area, but there's still neighbors. There's still neighbors. There's still people. You still see yeah. people at the corner store, you know, like. Yeah, exa- exactly. The corner store. Like, great example. We were like out in New Mexico at night in the desert. And we stopped to pull over and like look at the stars because there's no saint, there's no one, there's no pollution, yeah. there's no light pollution. Yeah. And then we, we were like, dude, I haven't seen a car in two hours. Have you guys? And they're like, no. And then we're like, <laughs> we're like, okay, let's get back in the van and keep moving because it freaked me out for a moment because I was like, if something happens, we're too far away to get help for anything. Can you so, imagine? Did you ever scary. see, um, did you ever see the movie First Man? No. Ryan Gosling's an astronaut. Can't remember which one. Goes to the moon, and there's this moment where the camera rolls behind him, and you see the Earth. Can you Ugh. fucking imagine? Nope. Too much. Too much Can you isolation. Imagine everything in your existence and in your history ever, ever, is that far away. Nope. That's I, I don't. A I don't think my bender. mind could fathom like those people that want to go to Mars. Cool. How go about ahead. the people that go to the bottom of the ocean? Get nope. fucked. Nope. Are you There's insane? Pla- we were never made to to fly in space. We were never made to swim the seas like that. We were made to have small groups of people <laughs> and like have lots of sex and 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 hunter hunt and gather. Anything more than that, we kind of we're kind of <laughs> learning as we go. You're and saying you're a luddite. <laughs> yeah, kind of like uh, I got you. you know I don't want to deal with this shit, but yeah. that. That deep, like deep sea, it's, I have that fear as well. Like deep mm. water. Oh God, it takes so much for me to go into a boat where I can can't see the bottom. Um, now I wonder if you're now if you're on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Pacific with a crew of however many on one of those, you probably don't feel as isolated on a big big ass boat. But still, you're like, this is it. What if a rogue wave just fucking? That's I mean, a real I thing know. too. You know, that's a lot of shit to think about. And luckily with that, you're like, modernity would be okay. You know, yeah. we'd be okay because I can make a radio call and a helicopter would be out here and get us before this thing sinks. Yeah, there's but four like, doctors on this thing. I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah. But it, the other thing too is, I just get it, man. If I, if I, if I go to Google, my favorite thing is to look at the globe sometimes, especially mm-hmm. if I'm reading history books and I go, oh, okay, this was over here and this used to be known as this. And this is approximately how far that army had to travel. Or I do that shit all the time. And it helps me familiarize myself with geography, essentially. So many times I've scrolled over like Hawaii in the middle of the Pacific looks like a pinhole. And I'm like, no, that must be what they call island fever. Like, no, I'm all set. Like I can walk to the other end of this landmass and you're telling me a tsunami could just fucking cut, bury this place. No, I'm all set. Yeah. it's Or it catches on fire. God forbid. Like those God poor fucks. Jesus. That's insane. Worry, Where do you fucking go? You don't go anywhere. They were running the water. They were people literally ran into the ocean to fucking save themselves from being burned it's alive. Fucking horrifying, dude. Don't worry. Our, our government took care of them with a whopping seven hundred dollars. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, fucking seven fifty. Hey. Seven fifty if you get an extra kid or something. I can't remember. <laughs> so fucking After all bad, the money dude. they extort from people, that's what they come up with. Yep. Well, without getting super uh, into fun current events like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The isolation. I mean, this gets into all of our favorites, man. Right, the thing, the alien. Thing. Mm-hmm. Did you did you ever see Creep Show two? Do you, I are you going small scale isolation on a raft? Yes. Let's go, Scott. Hit me. Small Dude. scale isolation on a raft with a fucking sleep creeper. Yeah, the sleep He's creeper. Like, mm, 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 Nuzzle her touch tits. Your titty. Oh mm, god. Oh wait. Mm, mm. <laughs> she rolls over and she's got all that jello on her face. Randy. Randy. It's pulling around. Oh, Ooh, that is. Dude, talk about. Okay, so that's dude. cool because that's an interesting type of isolation, isn't it? Because th- it's a very unique type of isolation. Because, yeah. look, if you want to talk about Antarctica and the thing, that's a very specific type of alien Antarctica. Very similar in, ter- in terms of isolation. There's nothing around, period. No. Nope. But, uh, but, in, but in, the, uh, in the raft vignette from Creepshow 2, you can see the shore. That's the temptation. Yeah. So talk You're, about that. What it, what it is is basically a gu- bunch of friends take a take their Camaro up to this lake <laughs> that's supposed to have like a uh, a diving board thing because this is what people did in the early eighties. They actually went places and like, oh, we're gonna go swimming. This is fun. Let's party. 
And, and uh, then as they're joining, schools out. Yeah, right. For summer, they're banging, they're punching the hood of the car, smoking doobies, fucking yeah, drinking buds on the way, ready to party. <laughs> and they're like, "Well, I, I was up here a few weeks ago. They, you know, they got the the raft is still up there, so we can dive and have a good time." They go up there, they they pull up, they empty themselves out of the car, leave the car radio playing, and the water's still <laughs> cold because it's kind of end of the season type thing. They shouldn't That's be right. there. And they swim to this raft and uh, they see, look over and they kind of see this like slick thing that's messing with birds and they don't think anything of it. And before they know, it grabs one of the girls and literally eats her like the, the blob. It's, yeah, it's essentially, it looks like a floating, it looks like a floating garbage bag. That's probably yeah. what it was. I but the special effects was. ended up being really cool. And then one of the girls, it, I can't remember how it gets the first girl, but yeah, it just grabs. It comes, it, 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 yeah, it comes near the raft and she's like touching it a little bit and all of a sudden it leeches up and grabs her and yanks her into the water. Right. So all these people are freaked out. So then you get the jock kind of douche nozzle wearing his yellow <laughs> banana ham. He's like, I can outrun it, man. <laughs> and then as he's going to jump, he he steps on the like the between the, the like the little slots between the raft and it pulls him through the fucking bottom of the wood. Yeah. The, so the wood planks have this gap yeah. between them, right? And in, in, yeah. in it in its Sort it's of pulsating itself. through. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think, and it's sticky. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, Randy's left with a hot girl and uh, puts her down because she's terrified. He can't hold her up anymore and he's trying to stay awake and they fall asleep together. And then he realizes she's asleep. So, of course, he's got a sleep creeper. He's got to pull her titties out and what start touching fuck? on That him. scene is so fucking bizarre. We were like, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, wait, what? Even, dude, same. When I was a kid, I thought, I don't think this is right. Yeah, I'm like, you don't do that. I Even was confused before, because I knew I was going to see her tits and I was a kid and I was, you know, rock hard. But I was yeah, also cool. like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. I'm this confused. This isn't right. This is the like definition this. of a confused boner as a kid. <laughs> this is it. This is the first of many. But, uh, <laughs> Ain't that the truth. <laughs> and then uh, he sleep creeps her and then he basically lays her face on the boards and the the, 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 the like oh, slick thing gets her. And he tries to make a break for her. He's swimming. He's trying to outrun it. Terrible he gets swimming, up. by the way. He's, he's got his head he out sucks. of the water, which means he's causing all this drag on his body. He sucks. And he outruns it. Gets on the shore as it's trying to get him. And he's like, I beat you. I beat you. Oh, he's like laughing at it. And then it fucking makes a giant tidal wave and get, grabs him. Yep. Sucks him back into the water. Which Nobody I gets was out of that one alive. Amazing. And then at the end, it pans over and there's a tiny little sign in the fort, like in the grass that says, do not swim here. Danger. Do not swim here. And I love that little tiny story. It's one of my favorite. It's really cool. It's not exactly, you wouldn't call it scary or even horrifying though, would you? But conceptually, no. imagine if you're on a raft and you're thinking, what the fuck? Yeah. Anything I can put myself into, you know, like mm. even with like science fiction and horror movies in space, I can never put myself there. I will never be in space. It's mm. not going to happen. But I can put myself, at, I'm swimming with my, my friends at a lake. And a bog monster comes out of the water. Like you, you know, you can you can personify yourself there. And I think anything like that really cut, you know, is easy for me to get unsettled by. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, it's it's it is unsettling. That isolation stuff is some real shit. Um, that's where, and I, and I know you you I know you sort of have a, a stance against it conceptually, but the lighthouse, two yeah. guys alone, the isolation of that. There's so many good isolation horror movies, but I think the thing stands out among them all to me because yeah, the thing, the and we talked about this on the episode on the Lost Drive-In, which you guys should go listen to, but we talked a lot about this idea of not only it, it's, isol you're not alone, but it is isolation. You're stuck with the people you have, but it also gets into horror because now the thing is moving among you. And it has yeah. the face of you, and somebody's hands are fucked up. You're like, what? What the fuck? This this is a rejection of your mind as to what this should be, and that is really creepy to me. That's the scariest shit to me. That isolation stuff, man. I don't know. That gets me. Shining, great example well, yeah. of that. All that That's, stuff, and like especially the body horror part, like the uncanny, like it's yo, it's people, but it's not people. Yes. It, it, body it, horror it, is fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Living within you, pretending like nothing's wrong, even though you know it's someone in this group. And they're like, oh, we're good. We're friends. And then so you're constantly double checking your friends and mm -hmm. looking over your shoulder. That's unsettling to me. It's very yeah. bad. It's very scary. That makes me uncomfortable. Indeed.
Like Let's I got go. another. Oh, oh, I was gonna go. say I got real quick. I got an honorable mention for isolation. Oh, hit me now. I mean, there's so many. We're not gonna get to them all in this episode, nope. for the record. There'll be a lot of misses in this, but we can do this again. Oh, absolutely. But this is one that's near and dear to my heart, and it was the 40th anniversary yesterday of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ah, which is a different type of isolation. You're isolated in a, in a Texan farmhouse where these people are murdering you and turning you into fucking chili and you ha- you can't go anywhere. There's nowhere to go. They're too far away from everyone. And people that's, we can't always do that forget here. the cannibal aspect of Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They're turning them into the, the, their, uh, their meat. Uh, my family's been in meat for 50 years, you know, it's, <laughs> it's terrifying. And, uh, it's based loosely on Ed Gein, a, the, right. uh, grave robber slash murderer i think he murdered a couple people but he definitely stole a lot of graves made a lot of nipple belts and and lampshades made out of skin i've been to where his farm is in in uh wisconsin and there's nothing there obviously they bulldoze all that pretty quickly but it's you can see how he gets away with it because of the isolation he has no neighbors anywhere near him yeah you know and he gets in his own head but yeah i figured i'd put that in honorable mention because it was 40 years yesterday it came out so yeah, good shit. Um, let's go to the uh, let's go to the members who we ask some of these questions to. We just said, "Hey, tell us what's scary to you." People made some lists, et cetera. We can bang through uh, a couple of them. Carpe Diem mentions frailty, get out the thing they live. Uh, I like that he put they live because although not scary conceptually, I do love that movie. I think it's very tongue in cheek, but um, I wouldn't call it necessarily scary in the traditional sense more of wow imagine if (laughs) yeah this imagine if that the whole the whole concept is scary like yeah it's a scary concept blending in with you and slowly taking over your your government and then your whole world oh oh, in every message that i think i think but why i think they live is such a brilliant movie is because the message is about compliance obedience it's all about conformity Conformity. it's fantastic uh, just so you can be easily, you can be, you can be what is known as a happy slave. And I know people get really upset when you use the word slave these days, but I think you but can use your true. imagination for just a minute if you would be so kind. Uh, but uh, that idea is is that it's that's the best the, the 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 best way is that way. It's hard to be a dictator. It's hard to rule in fear all the time. It's much easier when you can get compliance out of people by just draining their brain with consumerism. It's good shit. Yep. Absolutely. So yeah, conceptually scary. Um, uh, so Squid Throat has a movie on here called Pulse. Have you ever seen Pulse? Also no. known as Cairo. Cairo. It's a Japanese film by a director named Kurosawa, but not that Kurosawa, a different Kurosawa, I think, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Um, I highly recommend watching Pulse. Uh, there is a really scary scene in that movie. Um, I think we covered Pulse, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Pulse is a very cool idea. It is this idea about, I'm trying to remember. Do do you have it up in front of you? Yeah, when their computer hacker friend accidentally channels a mysterious wireless signal, a group of co-eds rally to stop a terrifying evil from taking over the world. Okay, that makes it sound dumb. It's way better than that. The idea, so the way, so the way Matt sold it to me is he said, because before I had seen it, he said, no, it's this movie where the, it's this movie where these people see this stuff on their computer and then they just sort of get up and walk away and then they kill themselves. So it's fucking freaky and it's very Japanese. Like that's such a Japanese idea to me. It's almost like they see this image that causes such dread in them that they kill themselves. So yeah. obviously this was ripped sounds... off by The Happening. The Happening ripped yeah. this idea off and made it stupid. It's the fucking trees. <laughs> the but trees, I dude. highly, there is this creepy scene where this woman walks in that janky way and, oh man, it's creepy. I'm pretty sure we covered this movie, but Pulse huh. is a really good call. I highly recommend people yeah. check out Pulse because it's one of those movies where seemingly put together person just is afflicted with this depression after seeing this thing. And that idea is horrifying. It's like it saps your will to live. It almost yeah. reminds me of the book Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson, this idea that you can be afflicted with a virus 
by reading, by seeing the code in the multiverse. I know this is getting a little out there. Mm -hmm. And then it fucks you up. It fucks up your brain. I love the idea. I love the idea of being in the multiverse. And, you know, a computer program is just a bunch of code. If you could see that code and then that code could somehow program your brain, that's a great, cool yeah, idea. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's really a cool. cool fucking idea, right? That's more body horror, though. That's what you love. It's true, yeah. And that in 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 Pulse, man, is fantastic. Highly it's recommend. Got, so good. It's got call a great tagline. It says there are some frequencies we were never meant to find. That's yep. cool. That makes yep. me actually want to get into it. It's cool. It's really cool. It's it's really deliberate and slow, but I, it's I don't know. It's a slow burn. It's very Japanese. I really dig it. But I but they're great at the the building the atmosphere. Like I was saying earlier, the slow burn. I'm okay yeah. with that. I don't need action sequences. I. I those days are over. I want to think. I want to be drawn in. I want it to be something that envelops me and I per put myself in that situation. Yeah, And absolutely. a lot of those movies do that. What is, um, uh, if we, if we go, I'll, I'll go down. I, again, I'm, I, yeah. I'm not going to name everybody's picks. No, get a couple but, of them in there. Uh, I, you know, I don't think any, uh, I don't think we've seen this, but the movie Lake Mungo has come up multiple times from people. Have you seen Lake Mungo? No, never even heard of it. I haven't either. I don't want any spoilers, but I think I want to watch Lake Mungo because it made multiple people's lists. Really? And it's uh, apparently pretty scary. Um, there was another call for Strangers by George Eby, so he's with you in that. Hell yeah. Obviously, The Exorcist, Shining, some of the some of the staples come up. Um, I tried to move away from that because everyone was going to go Shining. Everyone yep. was going to go Exorcist. You know, yep. like that's so... Of course. And, and, and they're, don't get me wrong, they are terrifying in their own ways. But I just kind of, I, not that I wanted to be like the scene stir and be like, well, actually, I've got movies that you've never heard of. But I want to, I wanted to be, have something a little more, you know, off the beaten path for people to hear about and then maybe go watch themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Jonathan Margeson, admittedly not a horror fan. So, of course, all his picks are non horror. So I'm going to bring it up. He said, How is scary being defined? I always let people determine how they want to come up with scary. And he put the following movies, The Road, Requiem for a Dream, and Munich, all bothered me after watching them. He thinks supernatural uh, stuff and gore is trash. The Road is a Cormac movie. Cormac McCarthy. Yes. That dude is dark, man. He's got some kind of darkness in him that he can tap into because that's not the only one that's like that he's written. Yeah, but, Blood uh, Meridian. They're talking about yep. trying to make it a movie. We'll see. No. Uh, that movie before my father's death, I could barely watch. I cannot bring myself to watch I, it ever I, I again. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Um, but that is 50 miles of rough road plus 50 more. Yeah. They're starving. They're, I mean, the fuck, it's like raining ashes. Yeah. They're just trying to get to the sea. It's a young boy and his father. He actually, Viggo Mortensen, a, yeah? Yeah, it's Viggo Mortensen. It's super dreadful. And it's, uh, it's, it's there's not a glimmer of hope in the entire fucking movie. Yeah. Um, there's a part where like cannibals, they're 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 looking and like they are hiding from cannibals in a building. They find out it's the cannibals building, and he goes he he levers the the pistol against the kid's head because he doesn't want him to be you know eaten alive and kept as a prisoner. And right. the kid's like, Papa, will I ever see you again? And I'm like, Fuck, like <laughs> it's Jesus, super dark. Christ. Yeah, I'm like, I wasn't expecting that. I heard it was like a post-apocalyptic movie, but it was like, it tore at my heartstrings, like, yeah. and it put me in that situation where I was like, damn, dude, that's just, just, I mean, there's not a redeeming part of that movie. There's no sunshine. There's no, yeah. you know, everyone makes there is it no out. Hope. It's brutal. It's brutal. And, um, and I don't want to watch those anymore like that. Taking a step back, Audrey uh, says Blair Witch is the most scared she's ever been watching a movie. So she's with you on Blair Witch. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I have, um, what is, what else is on, what else are some things you can think of? Uh, you know, for, for me, I got a couple here. One that made me very unsettling, uh, unsettled was, again, something that could possibly happen. You ever seen Signs? Mel Gibson? Mel Gibson? Yeah. Yeah, is that the one? I, I seem to remember having mixed feelings about that movie. It's with the aliens that, that yeah. are kind Joaquin of invisible. Joaquin Phoenix is in it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I mean, it's 
it's you know it's a what the twist you know what, literally you go to a planet that is 76 percent water and water is your enemy you kind of don't land on this planet you just keep moving that you was know? my big gripe with that movie yeah. right i was like That's dude why we're, <laughs> listen keep flying dude <laughs> you know i'm like yeah go go to the desert planet okay where literally it doesn't burn your your okay. skin like acid they but, show up uh, on a rackus. yeah also <laughs> and then and then you're like wait a minute their people are made of 70 percent water keep flying yeah. Oh man. So he spits on me. That's he's got a natural defense. The human can defend itself with a twenty-five yard spit. You know, it's like they're yeah. watching Walter Cronkite for us. But that movie unsettled me because of just the implications of fate, and it made us. It made me feel like the first movie that I saw about aliens that that we would be in trouble. Right. Like yeah, alien. That's a whole here. genre. That's a whole subgenre. It could yep. be science fiction. Could be horror. Yeah, it's like, and you know, they're kind of invisible. They walk among us. They're they're watching mm. us. They're scouting to see where the best places to land to, to plan an invasion. That movie un- made me uncomfortable uh, yeah. because it was like you know something out of the. It wasn't really scary. It was just unnerving. Yeah, which is a nice way to put it. Yeah, for sure. I. I, I don't remember. I, it's, it is probably unnerving if I remember, but um, it, it's funny. We're talking subgenres here and stuff like that. It makes me think of uh, what do you think about? And, and I know there's so many bad ones in the subgenre, but what do you think about any type of horror that centers on religion? Um, Exorcist, um, uh, Exorcism of Emily nuns, Rose, the, the Conjuring, like yeah. Yeah, um, I think it's old hat now, for mm-hmm. sure. It's been beaten to death. But it's something that's always captivating, because even if you're not religious, like, I'm not overly religious. I don't really believe in, or I don't really know what I believe. I'm kind of always going one direction or the other. Um, But it's something for a lot of people that brings dread. The the demons, the afterlife, the the demonic possession, all those things that are you know, askew yeah. from the Catholic way of life or, or religion in general, that unsettles people because, you know, if you have faith in something and something shows that it's the ad, you know, the adversary of your, your faith, or it would be a, against your faith. Yeah. You said it right. Ad, yeah. Ad, yeah. You said it right. Th- that can be adversary, I think is probably what more you're groping for, but I got yeah. you. Yeah. And it's more uncomfortable to you because it's something you find so much faith in and it goes against that. Like, you know, an exorcist, you can't, you can't dog it. A lot of people were uncomfortable from that movie. It made them it, it, question. That changed, that, that did, that, that did for, I mean, people got exorcisms after that movie. Yep. Yeah, it, so I, I like this genre if it's done well, and I think it could be done well again. Um, here's why. There's a great quote in the movie Legend by Darkness, of course, played by Tim Curry, which you're thinking, how is he going to connect this? Here's how. What is light without darkness? That great quote in that movie. Mm-hmm. It's not profound. It's been said a million times before that movie, but we're movie podcasters and this is what we do. So I think that the idea of exorcism or that type of fear is is really fascinating to toy with. I am... I am I am fascinated by the idea of religious horror. I'm fascinated by the idea of people maintaining faith amongst religious persecution. Uh, in other words, conviction, it, stories of conviction are very interesting to me. I love this scene in The Last Kingdom where they're going to kill that bishop. The, the, the Danes are going to kill the bishop. He's like, I'm fucking right with God. Like, kill me. Like yeah, go that, ahead. that's ballsy, man. That there's something really powerful about that. And if you listen to what I said about an hour ago, when I said, I'm afraid of execution because you can't fight that's, can you see the connection there? Mm-hmm. How one guy just accepts his, I envy the priest who can be like, I'm good with God. Kill me, yeah, brother. Let's go. That's badass to me. That, that rules. That's fucking awesome because it's, it's hard for me to get there mentally. And I really ah. admire that. I, it's out of touch for me, that kind of yeah, like grasp I, on religion. It's it, complete it just faith. Yeah, faith in general. And I don't have that in anything really. Like I have faith <clears> in things, but not like that much where I put my like, go ahead, shoot me. I'm done. I'm good. Me and the yeah. old me and the dude up there are good to go. I'm ready. Right. You're not right. Because we are afraid of dying. 
Of course. And, and I think most people are. But I think there comes a point in these types of people's lives where they're just like, it's okay. I can yeah. die. That, yeah. that, that, that's the ultimate fear. That's the ultimate fear is death. I think ultimately when you boil down control and your anxieties about this, it all comes down to, I don't want to die because yeah. that's a horrifying thought. Leaving this place, leaving people behind oblivion for eternity, right? That's just saying it's going to depress people. Sorry. Yeah. But, and, and your brain won't make you think of it too long. It'll change yeah, subjects. Yeah, move on. Because we got to keep moving, right? Mm -hmm. So, but people in faith go, no, nah, I'm in the kingdom of Christ, bro. Yeah, I'm Fucking good. kill me. I don't give a shit. Death that's, vault! You know, that's run. rad. I, but there's something powerful about that that I envy, which is why it's so juxtaposed in my mind against some of my greatest fears, which is having no chance to fight, just being killed, right? Your body be up to him or you got four months. What the fuck? You can't even fight it. Well, but boxing yeah. gloves on that shit. Well, but, that's the but, thing is like, that's my whole thing where I talk about like, I want everyone to go back to dueling with swords and stuff because you have a, <laughs> you have a chance. You got a chance. You I can't train, see the man. Some good sword fighters out there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? But at least you can train. I can't see the bullet coming that takes my life. Yeah, that's true. In war, you know, if you saw a dude come at you with a broadsword and you're like, all right, I got about a 50-50 shot of walking away from this. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see the bullet that grazes your grazes your skull and opens up your yeah. your brain and you're bleeding on the road. You're just done. For At sure. least give but me a chance. Right. So bringing that back to religious horror, here's what I think is fascinating about this idea. Because if you have a very strong faith in Christ and Allah, peace be upon him, uh, whatever it happens to be, there has to be a part of you that accepts real evil, Right. I don't want to get I don't want to get too philosophical on this. This happened on the Kirking Off show once. What does evil what does evil mean, right? Is a dude who has a brain tumor who does horrible shit to his neighbor, is he evil? I don't know. I'm not qualified to say and I'm comfortable saying that. Yeah. But but if you want to if you take some sort of thing that you believe in, right? I always make the joke, if you believe in crystals, then you have to believe in werewolves, and you certainly have to give Christ a shot, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like a, yeah. You can't. You, you can't. You can't <laughs> just say I believe in crystals and energy fields, but I don't believe in religion because that's just not consistent enough to me. And maybe <laughs> I'm full of shit, but yeah. I, I'm pretty strong in that opinion. So, or I mean, if you, you gotta if at least you, be open to it. <laughs> exactly. If you believe in crystals, you have to believe in werewolves, and you might want to consider Jesus. That's yeah. sort of a thing, right? That should be on a bumper sticker. But, um, <laughs> but holy shit, like there's a werewolf outside. I had a dream about a werewolf. I just told you about it. But, um, <laughs> but, but this idea of you say you do have that strong faith, then you also understand, especially if you're going through some literal interpretations of uh, biblical references, that you have to sort of believe in this malevolence, a true malevolence that delights in your torture, in your pain for evil's sake. That's a horrifying idea. Yeah. It's and the, the whole idea, thing of hell. It, right. So if, if I think once you get into, if you allow your imagination to drift in religious horror, suddenly the gates become open for some of the most horrifying things you could possibly imagine. Agents yeah. of hell, demons, things that will tear your soul apart. That's Absolutely. a scary fucking idea, dude. Right. So, and yeah. I was say, and because it's not corporeal, it's not part of our world, it's an unsettling thing. Like, you know, if you've got a demon that comes through and possesses a child and the child's complete personality changes, you're like, shit. What do you do? What do you do? Like, right. do, do, uh, you know, what if you're, you're, you know, you're not a religious person? Where do you go? Dude. That you become religious right then and there. Yeah, you, you do if your best a, to convert. If you, see a, if you experience a, de a demon, your next thing is, hmm, I should probably start looking at this religious okay. thing so I can combat yeah. against this thing, right? You All right, go, so I gotta Jesus, figure something out. You're like looking at the manual, you're like, you know, I never looked at this before. <laughs> you, you go get all the flyers. Yeah, you're like, Oh, well, these guys are these guys don't believe in the yeah. transference of, of body to Christ. You go through the list and go, this go one works for list. me. Yeah, go through the list. Figure it out, man. Because your immortal <laughs> soul is in trouble. That's right. <laughs> That's a crazy idea because there's there is this idea of you know, you die and, and pain ends. This is a common thing you hear about people who lose loved ones who, God forbid, something bad happens to them over a prolonged time. They're at peace now, they're not in pain. You bring religion into that, and you're like, are you sure? 
Because if a demon has them, they're in pain right now, constantly. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking horrifying. If they went to hell, forever. If they went to hell, they're being poked in the ass forever. Yeah. It's, it, and that's my big qualm with organized religion that I struggle with because it's like, I don't know, man. I, mean, I know. It's really, we, really who difficult. The f- who the fuck knows? Yeah, but that, I don't want to get too but, far dip even to that rope, but no, but just saying as as a horror subgenre. Yeah. When you let your mind do those connect those dots, it does start to get really creepy in your head. You're like, yikes, this is scary. Um, yeah, I mean, poltergeist was like, you know, that's yeah. the possession of from spirits. That's what's that mean? Nec- you know, this, you start summoning spirits and shit, anything with magic or supernatural powers. Now we're, what are, where are we going? We go now you're into mysticism. Now we're you're into, into mysticism. something. There's which powers is, that be out there. Which, so. which is go, you know, mysticism is any kind of really not organized religion. So it could be, you know, are those. Are like those Native American spirits, are they haunting them because they're on their property or because they've desecrated their property because <laughs> right. they move their tombstones? Yeah. You move the stones, but not the bodies. I love that. Dude, poltergeist is the most unscary thing in the world to me. It's, dude, you know which one was scary? The second one. When I was a kid, that old man going to the door, you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't because I didn't see oh, it. Oh, fuck. Do me a favor. Ha- pull up old man poltergeist 2. Well, and I'll and I'll tell you about them as you do that. Old, what do you want me to play? Is it an audio clip? Yeah, you, you're really putting me on the spot here. Kid. I know I am a little bit, and I'll talk to you. We'll give you time here. Okay, but it's it's terrifying because the man who plays this. <laughs> do you want me to show an image or a video? Uh, you could do both. I mean, show the image, but I mean, he's the way he talks. He's terrifying. Okay. All so right. I mean, that guy gave me nightmares for a decade of my life. That sounds about right. Because the, what happened is the guy who plays the old man in this, who's kind of like the he's the he's the the advocate for the spirits, kind of the, all the spirits that are remained un, at uh, unrest. He he was suffering from a cancer, so he's gaunt. Oh, like God, he died that's very quickly so after this. Dark. And he's you know he's yelling at them. Yeah, you know, oh, the spirits are going to get you. You're all going to die in there. I was like eight, and I was like, this is I'm I'm fucked up. I, right, you're, I you're had in dreams until t- I was like you, 17 about this old man. <laughs> you're in luck because I got it queued up, so we'll we'll fire it up. Hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully it plays. I heard that. I get around. I love getting around. Love talking to people. Even on a rainy day. He's creeping me out. He's scary, dude. The, the dogs are fuck off. Dog shedding. Ah. I like that we're so fucked up. We're like, just this old man with cancer is scary because he has cancer and he's skinny. Yeah, but he, it's just the way he goes to the door. I, I'm just kidding. We'll let it continue. <laughs> I saw you at the shopping mall. Sure you did. I remember your little angel here. Allow me to introduce myself. Henry Kane. Okay, he's not scaring me, Scott. But I was eight. You know, I got I'm gonna jump ahead. Families in crisis that are preyed upon by yeah. charlatans with fake magic and false solutions. Now, now, I don't expect you to believe me now, but let me come in and talk to you about it. Let me talk to you. This is this is crazy. This is nuts. Please open your heart and your mind to what I'm saying. He is angel. Who directed this? I have no idea. I can look it up. Still not scary. That didn't scare you? Like, that didn't make you uncomfortable at all? He does, but that's just because my own problems. But I'm going to let it roll a little more. Let Mr. me in. Brian Gibson. Who? Nope. Brian Gibson. Okay. Let me in. It's got some really good effects in it, but that dude creeps me out. Now, <laughs> before it's too late. You're gonna die in there. All <laughs> of you. You are gonna die. Sorry to see 
see. Man, he looks not good. No, that's he the scariest was, part to me. That's the thing is he was he was on death's door, and they were like, "Oh, this guy's great." Come to find out, he think he died right after this. Oof. Um, I get how that could. I get, just his just his appearance is unnerving for sure. Yeah, yeah. But that's like You're one of the things that stuck with me. There. You're yeah. all gonna die in there. So like, you know. We were latchkey kids. We had we had people like that come up to the door, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm not opening that fucking door." <laughs> Especially after seeing that kids. movie. <laughs> I ain't dealing with that. Uh huh. That's hilarious. All right. Well, we we're uh, we're just over an hour here. I know we didn't want to go too too long, but there's there's so much shit in here um, yeah. from different people who had different things to say, and uh, so yeah, we can go to a couple of them. Let sure. me run through a few of these. Uh, yeah, the man. witch came up, uh, Candyman, Hereditary, Saw, Inside, Hereditary, Henry Portrait for Serial Killer, The Descent came up quite a few times, That's Hellraiser, a uh, The Ring. The Ring is a scary movie. It is. Did you see The Ring? I did. Seven it, days. Yeah. Excuse me. The concept is really cool and really, you know, original. You're kind of like, oh, like you're in, a, you're watching this movie and all of a sudden you get a phone call. Yeah. And then you're just paranoid for the next seven days that if it's true or not, like yeah. imagine how much that would play on your mind. In the Even state if you're a rational they, person. In the state in which they find the bodies. Oh yeah. They're all disjointed and all like look like mm. they're in pain. It's wild. Ugh. And I like the, I like the stuff with the, with the student film, the creepy girl with the long hair and the well and yeah, how that all comes to be in the end, how they threw the kid in the well and the girl comes through the TV. Pretty cool. Pretty fucking scary. Yeah. I remember, um, I remember uh, that stuff very vividly. Coming out of the fucking, coming out of the TV was yeah. intense. I didn't expect that at all, but there was really good foreshadowing with it because there's this moment where the, the there's that fly in the film, but then at one point the fly's on the TV and you're like, what the hell, was that a coincidence? Like, and nope. it's just setting it up for later for when she comes through the television. Yikes. And that's some more Japanese horror that's really well done. Yeah, Ringu. I didn't yep. see that. Uh, Jacob's Ladder came up a couple times. Have you seen Jacob's Ladder? Uh, that doesn't sound familiar. Jacob's Ladder's fucked up. Big spoiler. It's a movie where this dude is shot in Vietnam, and then he's home, and he had recovered, and then his life is just played with all these weird visions, and there's all this weird metaphorical shit happening. Come to find out he's dead. He died because the end of the movie is you watching him die after his wounds. The whole movie is his journey to death. Oh, it's like it's his like life fu- flashing. It's fucked, dude. Ooh. Really creepy movie. Jesus. Creepy imagery. Yep. He sees shit. And like, why is he seeing shit? And man, it's it's really a gut punch at the end. Damn. Yeah, it's a gut punch. Tim creepy, Robbins. Creepy fucking movie. Cool. I'll check that out. Definitely. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. First what? one. Yeah, is that your fucking scariest to you? Talk to me about Nightmare. It's not my scariest. The scariest Nightmare on Elm Street is the first one for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. What's your scariest it, movie? Fuck, fuck Nightmare for just a minute. Do you know which one actually caught me off guard a lot? And a lot of people are like, that's bullshit. But it's uh, the 1929 Nosferatu. Mm. It's because creepy. It's very creepy. No it's, talking is creepy. N- no, no. I mean, it's... They've, title cards that tell you what they're thinking but there's no sound except for like an orchestra and as a kid that caught me off guard because i did i couldn't i couldn't differentiate the human with the makeup on right when i was younger you know you saw bram stoker's dracula you saw other vampire movies and werewolves i could see that's a human wearing makeup for some reason the way that was that one shot i couldn't break it in my head when i was a child and i was like that's a vampire that's a real vampire. And then there was like the whole like wa- like uh, story that the guy disappeared after they filmed it and he maybe he was a real vampire. He didn't disappear. He, he <laughs> did some acting as well, but mostly on the stage. Was his name and, uh, Max Shrek? Or, what, Max what's Shrek. His? Yeah, Max Shrek. Yep. Yep. Maximum Nosferatu. fear. Isn't that what that means? Yeah. Shrek. Yep. Rot That's Shrek. a cool stage name. That'd be like my porn name like we were talking about before. Yeah. Max Shrek. Yeah. Maximum Max Shrek. fear. Yikes. Who would want to work with you? I don't know. Not anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's one of those ones that like kind of is still one of my favorite horror movies even though it's you know it's fantastic there's, there's no audio um it's one of those that i put on all the time in the background because it's just it's atmospheric it's the music's great 
the jaunty kind of film style. And the fun fact of that is that movie was ordered to be destroyed. Hmm. It was a illegal copy of Dracula. They took the story and changed it a little bit. And they lost in court and it was ordered to all the movies, all those copies of that movie to be destroyed. And a couple people saved them. Mm. Other was than Bram that, they would Stoker be... still alive then? Uh, yes. I would imagine he I would think... be. I don't know when he died, but. So Stoker. I, it's so interesting that you picked a vampire movie because I love vampire movies and rarely do they scare me. Yeah. They more capture my imagination. They more fascinate me as an idea. Uh, maybe 30 Days of Night is scary conceptually, of course, but otherwise, vampire movies don't. Yeah. I'm never afraid of them. I'm only, I always think, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I you're like, wait. sign me up. Yeah, I love, I'm, I'm here for it. I want to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's different, but that one was so, he was so foreign. He wasn't beautiful. He wasn't powerful. He was just dark like a rat living in a, a castle Indeed. surviving on scraps. Indeed. Which is awesome on its own. Awesome. What about you? scariest right now yeah. in my head if i if you put a gun to my head i gotta say hereditary i figured you'd say that that movie's fucking scary man uncomfortable for sure and unnerving scary yeah and uh and i love it i think it's fantastic and uh it's funny because i can let myself be scared like a lot of people think well i've seen too many movies blah blah blah, blah. i think if you let if you if you let go for a minute and just enjoy the ride it's hard for me yeah yeah you got to let go and enjoy the ride, and then and then I can get into it. Hell yeah. But for many reasons, um, things that scared me when I was younger, Phantasm scared me when I was a kid, because I didn't like the fact that they were in a funeral home amongst corpses. That disturbed me just as a child, just that concept. Yeah, the, in the marble hallways, I, they're all I'd never seen in. that before. You have to remember, I'd never seen anything nope. like that before. I didn't know that's where dead people went. I was a kid. I thought they were in the ground, away. Yeah, you didn't know and that now they had to prepare them. walls of corpses. I didn't like that. <laughs> Just that idea fucked me up as a kid. Yeah. Right? And rightly so. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street fucked me up as a kid. Not as scary anymore, but Nightmare on Elm Street 1 fucked me up as a kid. Very specifically, Tina in the body bag. Yes. Imagery I will never get out of my head. That's very common, actually. A Her, lot of people call that as their, like, their horror movie awakening, like uncomfortable. Do, do, do you know why? Because it, it reveals to you certain things you don't know as a kid. Again, I'm watching this shit too young. I didn't know that there were morgues with bodies. And then I thought, that's so much death. Why? And I'm sad. I'm a child. I don't get it. I also didn't understand what a body bag was. I'm like, why is she in that bag? And then somebody has to explain it to me. And I'm like, well, that's terrifying. Why are you making this real? I'm a kid. Right? Yeah. It's little yeah, things like that. that. Those little moments of deep realism that put existential dread in your child like mine. You shouldn't be watching Nightmare at 10. No. So. I, I watched so much that I shouldn't have watched. Me but too. like my parents, when they found out that I was watching this stuff, they tried to stop me, but they realized it was already too late. I already gone down that dark path. And then they explained to me like, oh, well, there's a big difference between certain things. Yep. You know, Freddy Krueger is a man wearing, uh, you know, wearing, you know, stage makeup and, and he's not real. Right. And when, when they were able to tell me that when I was very young, it helped me be, be okay to watch stuff that was terrible for a young man to watch. For sure. Yep. Oh, All yeah. right. Here are some stats. All right. If any movie, and thanks to Maja for compiling this, if any movie occurred two or more times, it got put on this list. Yes. So we'll start with the twos. Paranormal Activity, six. We didn't talk about, we talked about found footage, I guess. We talked about Blair Witch, but we didn't yeah, really get bit. into Paranormal or you ever seen Willow Creek? No, I never saw that one. Bobcat Goldwaith's movie, he directed it. It's cool. And it's no about shit. these people who go out looking for Sasquatch. And it's no just kid. a tent in the woods. Talk about isolation. No, thank if you. If you go into the middle of the woods in the Pacific Northwest unarmed, I can't help you. Nope. Are you insane? You sign your own death warrant, pal. This fucking bit, the size of, all right. Uh, Paranormal Activity, yep. Sixth Sense, Rosemary's Baby. That Good gets one. into some of the genre we talked about. Fire in the Sky, that's more that idea of being captured and experimented Body on. Horror. That's, a, that's a horrifying idea. The Road, Requiem for a Dream, Woman in Black. I'm not sure what that is. Silence of the that. Lambs made the list. Probably that yeah. that, infra, that uh, night vision goggle scene, the NVG scene. Pretty mm -hmm. scary. Evil Dead, I don't know about that. Amityville, sure. We didn't talk much about Haunted House as a sub, but 
Hmm. Maybe next time we can. It follows Jacob's yep. Ladder, Poltergeist, Hellraiser, Saw, Lake Mungo. Damn, I thought Lake Mungo came up more times than that. I must be projecting twice. So those you all came up. want to watch up. it. I do want to watch it. So those came up two times. Saw, we didn't talk much about Saw. That's a thing too. That's a whole subgenre where, right? That idea That's just of tor torture it's porn. Just torture porn. Yeah. Um, like one that does it better is Hostel, the first Hostel. Mm. That made me not want to go anywhere near the Eastern Eastern Europe at all. Yeah. Did you ever see it? What? Hostel? No. No. Oh. These guys get party. They party and they're like, they're these two foreign beautiful girls kind of drug them and they end up being used to be bid on by like rich wealthy people to torture people. And like you nice. can pick and be like, I want the Asian guy. I want the American white guy. And they you tie them up. Like and, what? Bite them on the rump and stuff? No, they like they're pulling their fucking toenails out and slit slit in their Achilles and it's bad. And, but it's just it's it, but it's so uncomfortable. You're like, I'm not going to any foreign country and taking any drinks or doing anything. I'm gonna be like, mm, <laughs> nope. That's it's like what it's... Jaws did for the water. It did it yeah. for Eastern Europe. <laughs> <laughs> like, nope. Exactly. That's funny. Uh the stranger. Now here's some stuff that came up more than toy. Strangers, Candyman, The Shining, Event Horizon. The Ring and The Exorcist all came up three times. It's about right. I yeah. mean, you know, Event Horizon was uh, was t fear in space. Absolutely. I, I like that movie a lot, and I feel like they could have done more with it. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I'm still a big fan. The idea, I love a derelict craft, be it a derelict ship out sea that is being investigated or a derelict craft in space, let alone one that's traveled to what could be which could be constituted as hell. Yeah, another dimension of pain. Isn't it, it, it? Right, and it's this chaos dimension of death. And I love the implications of sci-fi almost blending with a potential undercut of religion there. Like, where did mm -hmm. the ship go? Yep. How can you explain this? It's why, why, why are we speaking Latin? I mean, we're talking biblical here. <laughs> In right? space. What the fuck? It's cool. Uh, n uh, the next on the list, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street came up four times, as did Alien. Yeah. Alien is phenomenal. I'm not sure how scary it is to me anymore, but I guess this brings us back to Nightmare, which we, which I, I kind of hot potatoed you off of it for a minute. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about Alien in a second, but tell me about Nightmare on Elm Street, and why do you think it's so high on the list? Is it just because of the age bracket of these people listening, and that's what they grew up with? We know our demo is 35 plus. Mm -hmm. Is what is could, is not why what's scary about nightmare i think it's so popular because everyone has bad dreams ah so we could potentially say well we know supernatural stuff is bullshit but we can be terrified in our dreams and we're helpless to stop it until we yes. wake up it's right? the helplessness of your dream you cannot even if you're a good dreamer like maja is you can she can remember her dreams so she probably can control them better than most people but she you can't. are at the no, she can't. She's at she the can't. Oh. mercy of horrible things. Oh, that's awful. Literally, dreams about being eaten alive by a pack of zombies. Ugh. Cra crazy yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, and I, and so you touch into that, and it's, I think it's because we're all, we all have to sleep. Mm -hmm. We're all vulnerable while we if sleep. If you don't sleep, you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to quote Nightmare. <laughs> yep. You, uh, it's something we don't understand Oops. still. We don't understand sleep. We don't understand nightmares. We don't understand why our brains do those things while we're sleeping and we're the most vulnerable. Why does it give us things that terrify us while mm. we're, we can't do anything physically or mentally? Yeah. Um, we all have that that instilled fear. And we've all seen dreams of boogeymen, people in the, you know, looking, you know, you. what do you do when you look out the window? Maybe it's just me, but you look out the window and you're like, hmm. you imagine someone's in the woods watching you. Like you're like, that's, that's going to get I... back to a question I want to end this pod on. All right. But continue. But yeah, so it's like, I think it's something we all, all races, genders, you know, ethnicities, we all have to sleep and we all have to dream. So I think it's easy to touch into that. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Alien, I think it's just mm -hmm. a great movie. Isolation again. How Space is isolation. the thing not on this list? More than once. That's yeah, insane get, to me. You, if me you're down. afraid of Alien, how are you not afraid of the thing? The thing's scary than Alien. 
I think I'd be more afraid of the thing because at least the alien, I know that's a xenomorph. That's not my friend Todd acting like he's, you know, <laughs> hanging out with me and he's going to fuck absorb me, you know? <laughs> that looks nothing like Keith David, let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Man, you this know, is it's... bullshit. <laughs> I'm so, tired uh, of this voodoo bullshit. <laughs> he fucking rules. He's so, so cool. uh, the descent is six. Spelunking. Dude, if I see you crawling through underground caves and you have to squeeze your shoulders to get through, nope, I'm out. I'm Going good. back up that ladder. Uh-uh. Count me out. Absolutely not. That's fucking scary. Descent's a kick-ass movie, and it is very scary. That concept, no. Nope, 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 nope. I get why that's scary to people for a thousand, a thousand percent. Yep. Also, is that not the polar opposite of what we talked about at the beginning, which is like the open space isolation of mm -hmm. nothingness around you? That's the complete opposite. <laughs> But it's still isolation. You're still, I mean, like there are people that I know personally that do that kind of stuff. They spelunk into caves where they, they literally have to go underwater and they have to go nope. 30 feet nope. and they have to hold their breath. I'm like, what, why are you doing this? You're just asking to die. Mm -hmm. Oh, get I'm a like, leg cramp. Nice knowing you. Yeah. Bye. They, they, you know, they, and they got to leave you there because they can't get your body out. Mm -hmm. You throw like, your back out in the middle of that. Your legs aren't working great right now. Bye. Bye. See ya. You're done. And like, I'm not a. I'm not af afraid of the world, but I'm not going to tempt fate yeah, and put yeah, myself yeah. in positions where I might not wanting I have to a... not wanting to cave dive doesn't make you afraid of the world. Scott. Yeah, right. You're right? safe. <laughs> <laughs> My spelunking career was short. You're going to live sorry. in fear. You don't want to spelunk with me through water caves. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I assure you. Too funny. Uh, Blair Witch number two, Hereditary number one. We yeah. gave them enough time. Wow. That's crazy. Anything but on I this mean, list that surprised you as you scroll back through it? Uh, you know, the only thing that really surprised me is kind of saw because I didn't find it that kind of, it's not. Didn't get to you that much. It didn't get to me like, I and mean, it got to a lot of people. That's why they keep making them. Yeah. But um, I think I saw like the fourth one or something like that. And it was like, there's no storyline behind it. It's just like, <laughs> what kind of weird contraptions can we pull people's teeth out with today? And I'm like, oh, right. I'm really not into that. Right. You know, that's for when you're 12 and you're trying to discover, like, what your boundaries are. I've long Indeed. since passed that. What about movies like Seven or Zodiac? I like those. Steeped those in are, deep realism. Yeah, those are fun because, again, mm -hmm. those can happen. Yeah. There's nothing to say a, a serial killer can't abduct you while you're walking your car at night and then you're, you know, you're tied up in their basement and they're, they're cutting off your fingers and, you know, what have you. It's... Yeah. It, that's... That stuff's the... That stuff's the most terrifying to me. My father always used to tell me, like, you know, when you were a kid, you had problems with two things because they could be real ghosts and aliens. Everything else I had a pro I, you know, went over my head or I had no problem with. But you play that unsolved mystery music and you play, you had and then it was a ghost thing, I was out. I would left the room. Can couldn't handle it. Yeah, because then I'll be yelling in your you must think of Jesus in this moment. Oh my god. <laughs> No, but Seven uh, is a very disturbing movie. And we, you know, I said, you know, give me some scary movies. It didn't, it's such a subjective term and a bit loose, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to see what kind of creativity people came up with. And yeah. I'm glad to see things like Seven or Zodiac. I like that either. Or something like The Birds, Monica put The Birds. The Birds, I, for so long, said, fuck that movie. But I'm coming back around on that movie because... That movie starts without explanation. I think that's a scary concept. No explanation. Yep. Let your mind do the work. Yep. Uh, Midsummer, of course, mm -hmm. something that can really happen. Phil describes it as you travel somewhere with a friend's and well, hey, the entire village is in a cult and suddenly you're getting roasted in a bull. Exactly. Yep. yep. But um, good stuff. And uh, thanks to Maja for putting this list together. Yes. Thank you. Which brings me to her picks since she put the list together. She did The Ring. Uh, the Grudge. Have you seen The Grudge? I don't remember. What is that? It's the Ju On uh, Japanese version. Uh, the Ring. You didn't see The Grudge. I remember the girl I, in the bed I, with the fucking long hair. I think I did, but hold yeah, on. it's I'm scary. Just looking here. A Tale of Two I'm, Sisters. I don't know, but what about the movie Record in Brackets? Bracket R E C. The Spanish movie. It's no, like a I've found footage that. style of movie. I did see The Grudge with a little Asian kid that makes the meows. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Ah. It's been a while, but yeah, I've remembered it now. 
And then Martyr, she put, which I don't know. And then It Follows, of course. Yeah, which we yeah. just covered. A creepy nude dude walking after you as a young woman. I could see being pretty fucking scary yeah. to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, as an adult man, a groom naked man fucking walking towards a. me. Get the exactly. fuck away from me, weirdo. You know, <laughs> Put your goddamn stupid dick away. This isn't the subway in New York. Put that away. <laughs> Session nine, shout out to session nine. I know you've been to Danvers. Danvers, baby. I uh, okay. I I was gonna. I explored. I did not break in. I did not commit any crimes. I just did, did you get mesophilioma from the fucking stupid asbestos? No, because we already knew it was covered in asbestos, and we wore hazmat masks. Good one. I got good, a painter's good. mask that filters out saying, that shit. Re rebreathers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have one too, for reasons. <laughs> Yeah, for, for, you know. Next you to my know. gas mask and firearms and gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and water my filtration systems. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. My bug out bag. Yeah, I got all yeah, that. Fucking bug out bag. So hey, there man. you go. Good you shit. Gotta prepare. That was good. Good. So last question. What's the scary, and this is, uh, again, provided by Maja, so thank you. What's the scary creature your mind conjured up as a kid? when in a scary situation, such as being alone in the woods or walking home in the dark? Is there a specific creature from a movie? In other words, what's that thing that you think you always see or that you're afraid you might see in the dark corners of the fucking night? When you just saw a scary movie and you're going upstairs, you're, you live alone, you must deal with this all the time. Every time I watch a movie, yep. I have to overpower it. I'm like, just got to close the blinds, lock the doors and go to bed and not think about it too much. Is but there an image you think it might be? Yes, there's something that's been haunting me my entire childhood, and I didn't know what it was until I was about 15. It is a, like a um, a tall, lanky man with hooves and like a deer head. Okay. Now, come to find out, it's the Wendigo. Oh, okay, but right on. I've been seeing that in like the dark, in my imagination, my whole life, and I really? never saw any. Yeah, I never saw anything when before it, that showed me it. When until I was like 17, and I watched a movie that had it in it, and I was like, "What the fuck." I was, I was up. like, I was freaked out because I was like, how do these people know? It's like when you, you figure out that people have other people have eye floaties and yeah. you're not the only one. Yes. You know, you're Thank like, God. yeah, you're, you're like, like oh, do I, I have a brain tumor? Yeah. You're <laughs> like, am I, I stroking right now? Am I having a stroke? <laughs> but you find out that it's everyone. It was, it was so weird to me that like something I've been seeing since I was a child in my dreams and mm -hmm. in, you know, when I'd be outside, I'd be like, oh, I wonder if that thing's out there. And Come to find out it's something real that people have been talking about for like 3,000 years. It's scary. What about you? You didn't hear that, did you? No. I, you're yeah, cutting out. You, I'm cutting out? A little bit. It's Discord being stupid. It's less exciting if I go like this. <laughs> Play Dude. <it> twice. <laughs> That's where I got it from, the return to innocence. <laughs> the commercials at night when I'm, I fell asleep. When it's got a deer head. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. That's What about you? I don't think I do. I really? don't think I do. No. I remember a dream I had once. I was in the house I grew up in, and I remember running away from... I was in the basement, and there's a sliding glass door, and then woods behind it. No curtains, no blinds. So when, it, when you had the cellar light on, there was just reflection of you. You couldn't see outside because you're inside Ugh. and the lights are off outside. Yeah. And I remember being a little kid and looking out there once and thinking I saw something in the woods. And then I had a dream about that thing where I was standing and I was standing down in the basement and I was hiding, you know what a lolly column is? Yeah. And I was hiding and I was peeking around the corner of the lolly column looking at the glass and I just saw a free floating face in dark shadowy clothing with eyes and no mouth that's why i brought the no mouth thing earlier no. and it just started to f like sort of slowly move towards the glass and i just freaked the fuck out and i started to run upstairs and that was the first dream i remember as a child where i could feel myself not moving fast as i thought i was i felt like i was moving so slow up the stairs and i remember it, they're just being this sort of pallid hand reaching for me, coming from the shroudness that surrounded its body, reaching for me as I started to run up the stairs trying to get away. And then I woke up. And I was a little Ugh. kid. It freaked me the fuck out. I remember like crying and shit. I have goosebumps, but, um, man. 
Yeah, it was creepy. That creep that creeped me out as a kid. That's the only image I remember distinctly. I've told this story before. I had the dream about my mom's head being on upside down. That's because of fucking Exorcist, goddamn yeah. movie. Oh. And dude, I don't even know how I knew that was a thing because that wasn't in whatever cut. So I must have seen a different cut of that movie somehow. I don't know. Maybe I'm prophetic, but or maybe uh, you never know. That scared the shit out of me. There's been a few few times like that, but no, it, I don't usually have a recurring. Uh, a recurring villain, as it were, but that stuck out to me. I don't think I ever dreamed of it again, and I don't think I dream. I think I've dreamed of that thing of my mom a couple times as a kid, but, but yeah, between those two, and it wasn't like The Exorcist. So when my mom was coming after me in my dream, she was on her hands and knees, sort of running after me on her hands and knees. And at the time, she had very long dark hair, and was, her head was on upside down, so her hair was dragging on the floor Ugh. between her arms, and she was like, "Dean, come here," Ugh. and that. That's horrifying. That scared the shit out of me. Probably more than the free-floating face without a mouth. And I know where that came from. You know where that image comes from? Fucking where? Twilight Zone, the movie. Oh. There's a vignette where the kid with the sister, they keep her locked in the room. She doesn't have a mouth. The, the camera pans down, and she's just mouthless. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and that, that idea is stuck in my head because that can't happen. That doesn't work. It's broken. <laughs> can't be that way. So, anyway... Jesus. So yeah, that's our little jaunt through the horror of all oh, the horror. <laughs> Any yeah. closing thoughts on some of this stuff? We could have gotten another hour easily. But. Oh, definitely. But uh, well, and we'll probably have more of these at some point. I'm sure. Um, you know, I think uh, as I've gotten older, I think the like the the things that move slow and, and let my mind wander mm. and don't show me everything are really what I'm going for nowadays. Yeah. You saw Hereditary. Yeah. Did it scare you? Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. I yeah. saw it in the theaters and I was unsettled walking to my Me too. car. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good shit, Scott. Thank you very much for all of your assistance in this Maja when you listen back to this. And uh, thank you to uh, the people who sent in submissions. Good stuff in there. Oh, I don't yeah. think there's anything too important in here that we missed. And we do appreciate the feedback and, of course, the aggregation. And, um, yeah, man, that's good shit. A ton of fun. We appreciate your support. You will not be hearing from us next week on this feed because we're going to um, be taking that week off. We feel like uh, we, we need a little rebreather, a little refresh, and then you will be hearing us covering. The next thing you'll hear on this feed is Child's Play, which won the vote, which will be for members only. We can talk about scary fucking dolls. That should be Hell fun. Yeah. I, think doll, I think dolls aren't scary at all. But I'm 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 not beyond convincing. We'll see how we it can goes. Try. I tell you what, I'll break that fucking porcelain head with a brick. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here! You're two feet tall. I'm not afraid of you. I'll kick the shit. I'll kick you out of the fucking house. Well, I'm sure I'll be proven wrong because I'm sure it's all supernatural bullshit in the end. But uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys in two weeks' time with Child's Play. Um, and on the regular feed next week, we're going to be getting back to our uh, summer scares, wrapping up the horror season, the the summer horror ski season with a little uh, barbarian. Not to be yeah. confused with Conan. But, uh, <laughs> that's it. We appreciate your continued support. You guys have a great one. We love you. Peace. Good shit, Scott. Oh, yeah, brother.